think change kind of means like a rebirth of sorts. A rebirth of sorts. Does everybody know what that means? Yeah. Okay, great. I saw a hand at the back. Is that still the case? There are also mics at the back that you guys can walk up to. Um, um, I think that change is something different. <coughs> or like you are not really usual. It's not usual like uh, stuff you normally do. If you're close to the mic in the back, you can go and walk to the mic. <laughs> Any more responses? Um, I think change is like when you adapt to a new like situation so it can get better or have a better outcome. Yes, we have there, and we have a couple over there as well. I think change is when you convert from one form to the next. I like the snaps of affirmation, y'all. Keep that going. I think change. Oh. I think change is like when something is different from what it was before, you go to bed. Any last thoughts, responses, comments, agree, disagree? No? All right. So, change, I heard a lot from the audience about what change looks like physically, right? But when you think of change in the context of social justice, right, it can look like a lot of things. So change can culminate in a protest, and it can look like the months of community organizing, the months of planning that lead up to this moment. Change can look like networking and utilizing your leverage on social media to bring light to issues that are happening in other countries and the silencing of voices. Change can also look like voting and using voting as a method to keep our representatives accountable and voting them out when they don't. And lastly, out of those three examples that I showed you, all of them involve you, right? They all involve some method, some form, some degree of your participation, your engagement. Ultimately, you are an agent of change and none of that work occurs without you. So as Ivan said, you are the agent of change. Only you can make what you want to change happen. So all of you have to be your own activists. For some of you, this may be through the center. For others, it can be through school. Black Lives Matter movement started with teenagers. So getting involved in the things you care about. So let's talk about so let's talk about individual activism. Does anybody know who's up here on the screen? Yeah, she is the starter of Black Lives Matter. Um, she was also an individual activist that wanted to find or found the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, she used art to, such as theater, dance, visuals, and audio to express issues in the black community. She was a big advocate for prison abolition in Los Angeles as well. Um, she chose to be an organizer which led to collective activism, which we'll talk about later. An important quote is, what she said is, I identify as an organizer first as an activist because I believe an organizer is the smallest unit that you build your team around. The organizer is the person who gets the press together and who builds new leaders. The person who helps to build and launch campaigns and is the best person who decides what the targets will be and how we're going to change this world. 
So I also consider myself an individual activist, such as many of you. Um, so my activism truly started when I took a course in my high school called Youth Activism, and I learned about the Flint, Michigan, and they didn't have clean water, which led me to go, which led me to go to Washington Square Park and actually speak to other people about the issue and bring awareness to it. Although we still haven't figured it out. Um, and I focus on environmental racism and justice. Through that, I joined Black Lives Matter in my high school as well, figuring out um, that there was Wival, which I'm a part of now, through my teacher from the Youth Activism course. And I also use my Instagram and Twitter to advocate for others and put news up and bring awareness to other issues as well. So, leading to collective activism. All right, thank you.